Hi guys. It has been a long, exhausting day. Uh, <laughs> and it is goddamn <coughs> after 9.30. It's getting dark so late now, which I'm glad it is that I don't even start my evenings till close to 9 o'clock. But it is Monday, March 25th, 2024, and somehow I am going to find the energy for this week's dump the Trump D high roundup where I just go between the mainstream media and medium.com for j j just more plain unambiguous language why this motherfucker needs to go. I, 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 I'm still trying to keep my sense of humor about Donald Trump coming back, but, uh, but, but guys, it, 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 it's not fucking funny. Uh, we're going to try to find some sick, twisted humor because when you uh, give up on uh, finding humor in, uh, in catastrophe, you end up like Michael Rupert. Uh, splattering your fucking brains all over the driveway. So, uh, to try to keep you from splattering your brains all over the driveway, I don't know how many I, I've, I've picked out here, guys. Uh, and, and I had like 20 to choose from. We're going... Let, Let's start with a Donald Trump quote. Let's hear it directly out of Donald Trump's mouth from Salon Magazine uh, from an article titled Forensic Psychiatrist on Physical Signs of Trump's Mental Decline. And this apparently... Uh, is uh, is a direct quote. Unless Salon Magazine is flat out making this up, and I don't trust anything anymore. So according to Salon, this this is uh, this is for real. Um, Donald Trump's obvious public challenges with speech, language, and thinking are continuing to get worse. At a recent rally in Ohio, the former president continued to act like a broken computer, going off on odd tangents, rambling, muddling his speech. He's sounding a whole lot like me so far. Going off on odd tangents, rambling and muddling his speech, and saying, direct quote, from Donald Trump in Ohio. Joe Biden won against Barack Hussein Obama. Has anyone ever heard of him? Every swing state, Biden beat Obama, but in every other state, he got killed. Close quote. C could you imagine if Joe Biden what, what what Fox News would sound like, and not just Fox News, all of them would sound like if Joe Biden got up at a campaign rally and said Donald Trump won against George Bush. Has anyone ever heard of him? Every swing state, Trump beat Bush, but in every other state, he got killed. If, if, if Joe Biden ever said anything like that, he would be absolutely filleted uh, on Fox News and, and, and all the rest of it. But, it, but it's barely reported uh, that this guy is every bit as, as deranged and senile as Joe Biden. 
who was, who was pretty goddamn deranged and senile himself. Uh, but I need some, uh, I, I do need a little bit of humor, and I did enjoy this, so before we go over to medium.com to hear from, um, from Umer Hack and Indica, let's have a little, uh, Trump humor from good old USA Today by a fellow named Rex Hupke. Take it away, Rex. For sale, Donald Trump lightly used Republican presidential candidate $454 million firm. Yes. Don't miss out on this great opportunity to own a Republican presidential candidate. Donald Trump is a used one-term former president in peak mental and physical condition. Many say they've never seen a former president so fit who would prove an asset to any buyer seeking political influence, substantial tax breaks, or an opportunity to undermine Western democracy. To date, this presidential candidate has never been wrong about anything and has done everything, from managing his businesses to calling foreign leaders seeking dirt on his political rivals perfectly. Experience includes being the best president, the best Republican president in American history, even better than Abraham Lincoln. Forcing, forging close, admiring relationships with notorious dictators and almost successfully overthrowing a rigged presidential election. This one-of-a-kind, pristine Trump model comes complete with legions of authoritarian curious supporters who are easily convinced to trade their money for cheap red hats and unkempt promises, as well as an array of New York real estate assets the candidate very much does not want the state to seize to pay for his recent $454 million business fraud judgment. The candidate is skilled at bankruptcy and has extensive experience selling steaks, vodka, mortgages, board games, ice, a university, himself, plane flights, and a magazine. Seller is highly motivated and will include all of the candidate's family members. His impressive portfolio of 90 plus criminal indictments, a $50 gift certificate, good on purchases of $1,000 or more at his Mar-a-Lago Resort gift shop in Florida, <coughs> one random box of classified government documents, and a free <coughs> autographed copy of his best-selling book, The Art of the Deal, $1 million shipping and handling, not included. Please note, the candidate is missing morals, scruples, a basic sense of human decency, the ability to think outside of one's self, remorse, a moral center, loyalty, coherent thoughts, and an understanding of how laws work. Serious Inquiries only, foreign bidders especially welcome, sale must be completed by Monday, March 25th. Please contact 
John Barron at 1-800-L-U-V-M-A-G-A. There you go. Thank you. Uh, thank you, USA Today, for that. Uh, the most honest reporting. Uh, okay, so I, you know, Umer Hack has already not quite as vociferously as I and Elliot Jacobson and others have called the election for Donald Trump, but with each passing week, uh, Umer, where, it, where does Umer live? Is he, is he from England? I don't think Umer's an American citizen. I think he's over there in England. And uh, so he had a long essay. You know, Umer does not write short essays. So uh, I just combed out this paragraph about why voter, why anybody with a, a, a fucking brain would vote for Donald Trump and basically his response is that people voting for Donald Trump don't have a fucking brain that they have absolutely d just no no sense of discernment critical thinking and nuance they they do not understand uh, the most basic concepts of discernment, critical thinking, and nuance. Uh, and and they, they, they can only see the planet in one-dimensional terms. So if, if anything is thrown at them, that uh, that requires of their stunted intellect to uh, to consider other dimensions. They get confused and they get lost, and so they obviously then they are attracted to a one-dimensional cartoon character that, you know, a cartoon character, uh, just a, well, is it not even a two-dimensional, uh, it, it is basically all they can handle. And this is why, this is the great mystery uh, of why there's uh, 80, however many million Americans uh, voting for this uh, shallow uh, motherfucker. This is, uh, I'm just going to read this one paragraph, you know, that people are, are uh, that, that these uh, clueless fucking morons are voting for him, but, quote, because Trump is one dimensional, there is nothing there but what meets the eye. The rage, the spite, the hate, the vitriol. What he promises today, he'll surely deliver tomorrow from dictatorship to politically motivated prosecutions to isolationism, fascism, and authoritarianism. And behind all of this is only one simplistic, childish idea which isn't even an idea really at all, just a mirage, the demagogue's eternal fairy tale. Trump wins and thrives because he is one-dimensional and this environment crushes anyone and anything who is not. Thank you, uh, uh, Umer, for explaining that. But we're going to go from Umer, we're going to go over to Sri Lanka and hear from this fellow named Indika. We're going to hear from two of his essays right next to each other. 
the first one titled How Biden is Doing Trump's Homework, Biden has laid the groundwork for Trump's second term. And what IndyCop is talking about in here, uh, as I've mentioned so much, it's not so much Trump or Biden, it's just that this absolutely joke of a choice that Americans have. Uh, it, 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 it's, you know, I say it's a, a vote the frying pan of the fire. Uh, it, it's a vote for a pile of horse shit or a pile of bullshit. Uh, Indica correctly, uh, now of course he's from uh, Sri Lanka and uh, so he, he has a little bit of distance to watch this, this shit show uh, coming down and he has nothing but pity for any American with a fucking brain that understands that either one of these motherfuckers is doomsday for the planet. So uh, he has written this long, long essay how Biden, this was written on March 18th, how Biden is doing Trump's homework. And I'm just going to scroll through here uh, for some of my favorite uh, favorite quotes. Uh, okay, a general rant. A general rant. This is all that is left of the American political landscape in 2024. Fear and loathing. They, meaning Americans, have a choice between someone who cannot talk and someone who should not. They have a choice between banning Muslims and bombing them. A choice between colored people participating in white supremacy or just having white people finish it. What are the actual choices here? It's like choosing between kicked in the left nut or the right nut. Who gives a fuck? The fact is that Biden and Trump are just two wrinkly old nuts in the same sack. Biden's main innovation has been diversifying the corrupt ruling class, getting colored people to participate in whiteness, a fluid category that would not have included him as an Irishman just a century ago. Now black people can support, uh, anyway, he, he tends to go back and forth. Uh, still talk about uh, who wants to be included in this shit. Trump makes whiteness white again, but they're both doing wrong. As I have said, Joe Biden deserves to lose, to be hung actually, and Trump does not deserve to win. You could say America does not deserve this, but oh yes it does. <laughs> oh, anyway, then he goes off uh, on, the, uh, on an anti-American tirade, uh, which, um, which I uh, enjoy, but he gets a little off track. Uh, I certainly did not see it coming, but Biden has been worse than Trump on every metric except lying to liberals, and yet I am sure that a second Trump term will surprise us all with a new low. Yes, uh, let's see. Okay, anyway, get to the bottom of it, Indica. There are no choices here. 
just circumstances, while Biden is the visibly decaying face of late empire, Trump is the visibly raging one. They are just two sides of the same imperial coin that can't even buy you a soda anymore. It just steals your money and spits out the body parts of foolish vassals and innocent children and no change at all. And then, uh, two days later, he comes out, and this is just part one, is I titled, I read Trump's transition plan so you don't have to. So he, he mentioned in that last, in that last one, that he had gotten hold of this uh, transition plan. What the hell is that thing called? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm just... Uh, These experts is introduced by the Heritage Foundation's Kevin Roberts have four goals. I'll take these at face value before defacing them. Number one, restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. Number two, dismantle the administrative state and return self-governance to the American people. Number three, defend our nation's sovereignty, borders, and bounty against global threats. And number four, secure our God-given individual rights to live freely, what our Constitution calls the blessing of liberty. Uh, and he goes back, good God. Uh, he tears this up, but I just want to pick one section of this. Uh, we're going to read the chapter of this long, long, what to cut. What to cut. This document is deeply thin on actual solutions for actual problems because the deep assumption is that it's not their problem. It's China's problem. It's migrants' problem. It's those elites' problem. Just hit them hard enough and everything should be peachy. Hence, while they identify the cancer of the administrative state consuming America, they misdiagnose the problem as being cultural institutions like public libraries and public health agencies and not the military industrial complex which consumes the vast majority of discretionary spending. The document says, and then he, th this is a quote directly from it, the conservative promise lays out how to use <clears throat> many of these tools, including, uh-oh, uh did I, uh, Oh shit, I'm sorry guys. I, uh, my, my computer jumped. Okay. Anyway, uh, but that, that was all fine and dandy. I was saying, this doesn't sound right. Okay, I'm sorry, my computer jumped when I was getting a drink. My, this computer tends to jump. Okay. But I'm not going to start this rant over. What not to cut? What they... Ray Trump want to cut is social services, public education, DEI initiatives, 
basically all the lipstick on the pig, but not the pig itself. In fact, they want to baste the pig in oil and roast it. These conservatives, somewhat analogously to Russia here, want to take the real politic view of just leaning into fossil fuels. And this is quoting uh, the report, quote, the next conservative president should go beyond merely defending America's energy interests, but go on offense, asserting them around the world. America's vast reserves of oil and natural gas are not an environmental problem. They are the lifeblood of economic growth. American dominance of the global energy market would be a good thing for the world. Yes, and more importantly for we the people, full spectrum strategic energy dominance would facilitate the reinvigoration of America's entire industrial and manufacturing sector as we disentangle our economy from China. Globally, it would rebalance power away from dangerous regimes in Russia and the Middle East. It would build powerful alliances with fast-growing nations in Africa. Huh, and provide us the leverage to counter Chinese ambitions in South America and the Pacific. And that's all Indica can take. And so this is Indica's uh, translation of what you just heard in the report. Take it away, Indica. I'll ignore the climate change part because within American politics, that's just a pious platitude. <coughs> Biden pretends to care about climate change, but has actually drilled and fracked more than anyone before him, the same as Barack Obama proudly did before. There is no political payoff for actually cutting fossil fuels, and there's no cost to just lying about it, which is all Democrats do. What I will point out is that the reindustrialization this document discusses is a physical, political impossibility. We were past a huge blunt in the form of fossil fuels, and we're at the roach end now. It's a non-renewable resource, and we're just running out. America is fracking its last vein, and there simply is not enough economically viable oil to make America great again. The problem is not political will or regulations, and it's not even the climatic consequences. America simply does not have the natural or human resources for another economic boom, and even if they did, the planet would just explode <clears throat> even faster. This rerun strategy is akin to saving the Titanic by laying on more steam while most of the engine room is dead, or would rather be YouTubers. What's interesting to me, which is why I read my enemies, is that Roberts correctly identifies the actual problem of climate collapse, which is philosophical humanism, or what Dr. Murphy calls human supremacy. As Roberts writes it, quote, this again, this is uh, quoting out of his document, quote, at its very heart, 
environmental extremism is decidedly anti-human. Stewardship and conservation are supplanted by population control and economic regression. Environmental ideologues would ban the fuels that run almost all of the world's cars, planes, factories, farms, and electricity grids. Which, of course, I wish they would because, you know, half of humans will be dead within six months. Abandoning confidence in human resilience and creativity in responding to the challenges of the future would raise impediments to the most meaningful human activities. They would stand human affairs on their head regarding human activity itself as fundamentally a threat to be sacrificed to the God of nature." Close quote. He is rightly wrong. <clears throat> human affairs do need to be stood on their head for other life forms to have a chance to live. But never mind now, industrial civilization has no reverse gear. The old gods of weather are angry and they're just gonna clean slate everything. These guys, meaning, you know, Trump's transition team, are focused on a change of administration and going back to the 1980s because American culture is actually dead and has to reboot everything. But times have changed. These are the end times, scientifically speaking, if you must be a heathen. In the 1980s, after what Westerners called the oil crisis, there was a clear fork in the road. The climate science was already there, international instability was already there, and research like the limits of growth had come out predicting collapse by about the 2020s if people did not change dramatically. The Reagan revolution was effectively a counter-revolution against all this. The reacted against the changing consciousness of the 60s and 70s and acted against global changes with coups, corruption, and, and invasions. Uh, they just continued the American dream a little longer, drilling, killing, and printing money to paper over the cracks that appeared. Other honestly wrong scholars like Francis Fukuyama call this the end of history, and it was because Western civilization honestly ended then. This is just the coda where everything is a reboot, including this policy document. They're just harking back to douchebags of the past like that will cleanse everything. This document is fascinating, and I won't even call it fascist. The truth is that the Nazis took notes from America. Project 25 is just the American project shorn of hypocrisy. And then uh, he says, and, and then he, we're going to hear from part two. I uh, don't have time to uh, read us. God gave us Trump. Christian media evangelicals preach a messianic, messianic message, but uh, a little bit of the billion dollar Trump hate gear market. Is he running for president or grifting? Last night, I, this is uh, John Dean. Last night I visited Amazon.com out of curiosity. 
Was Amazon still selling Trump campaign merchandise bearing the word fuck? I should have known they were, but I wonder why. Why would the largest online retailer risk alienating buyers by selling merchandise best described as hate gear? I found seven pages of gear, you know, basically the fuck Biden gear, including a baseball cap reading fuck Biden and fuck you for voting for him. The cap depicts an obscene hand gesture. A Biden is a piece of shit bumper sticker for only five dollars. A three by five fuck Joe Biden flag depicting Trump giving a double bird wearing an American flag headband. The flag has brass grommets. A fuck Joe Biden bottle opener to open beers with. Fuck Joe Biden beer koozies to keep the beer cold. A bumper sticker reading Joe Biden is just Hillary Clinton with a smaller dick. You get the idea. Visit the page here if you like. Of course, Amazon is an equal hate retailer. Seven pages of fuck Trump gear is also for sale. Curiously, the Trump 24 fuck your feelings flag is found under both fuck Biden and fuck Trump. <laughs> and uh, the fuck Biden uh, line of merchandise is alive and well at, uh, in Denellen, Florida, but uh, I have not seen one example of uh, fuck Trump merchandise here in Trumpville, USA, but I might have to go over to Amazon.com and get me some fuck Trump. Wouldn't that be a, a way to get a cross burned on my property in uh, Denellen, Florida? Anyway, fuck Donald Trump. Fuck him. All right. We will see if I have the energy to do this next week. Bye, guys.